Is there really a best light for the planted aquarium? Today's video is meant to help you navigate the world of purchasing a light for your planted tank. So I'm gonna cover a lot of the big topics regarding lights, Kelvin, Spectrum, Wattage, Par, and then some of the big brand names that are commonly available as well as some of my favorites so that you can pick the best light that meets your budget. Okay, so first things first, I've said it before, I'll say it again, any light is better than no light. If you're on an extreme budget and all you can afford is a desk lamp over your planted tank, then that's better than having no light. But not every light is made equal. There's a lot of things that come into play. So spectrum is really the most important thing to talk about. When you think back to your high school biology class, if you were paying attention, you may remember photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is just the process where plants take in light, they combine that with CO2 and water, and they jumble around these molecules to make sugar. Sugar is the building block for plants. It's the main food source. They use sugar to like literally build cells on top of each other, producing leaves and stems and flowers, all the main parts of the plant. The main driver for photosynthesis is this pigment chlorophyll. And so it needs to have a very specific type of light to basically heat it up and get it going so that it can start churning out the photosynthesis process. And if you wanna maximize photosynthesis for your plants, AKA how fast they're growing, then you should look for a light where you see spikes in the wavelength between around 450 510 and 650 nanometers. So that sounds crazy complicated. You don't have to be a scientist to figure this out though. Just look on the back of the box. You'll usually see this chart with a bunch of color on it and then spikes corresponding to the areas that I just talked about. So Kelvin is another way to look at light spectrum in a sense. It's not an accurate term if you're a scientist, but just hold with me for a sec. Kelvin is looking at the color of light. So you'll always see it in thousands or K, you know, 3000 Kelvin, 5000, 10,000, whatever. For planted tanks, you want something between 6,500 and 7,500 Kelvin. So the lower you go, 3000 is gonna be kind of yellow and then up past 10,000 is gonna be kind of blue. The full spectrum, 65 to 7,500, that's gonna be kind of a white light and it's gonna resemble how the sun looks. And so the reason that that's important for plants is because this white light, it's not actually white. It's a combination of all the colors that you'd see in the rainbow, the visible light spectrum. And once those all kind of blend together, they show up as a white light. And so plants really utilize different colors you know I talked about the red green and blue light before the spice in the spectrum those are the most important ones but they do use other parts of the light so this full spectrum is giving them everything they need to grow and even though it's not completely scientifically accurate like looking at the wavelengths it is a really quick and easy way to determine a good quality light for you and it's actually something that a lot of companies are kind of opting for these days. So wattage is something that people used to look at a lot more than they do nowadays. Wattage is simply like the amount of electricity being consumed by your light. And that's an indicator of how intense the light is. So back in the day, people would say, you know, for a low tech tank, you'd want one to two watts per gallon. And for a high tech tank, you'd want three to four watts per gallon. That was more applicable when we were looking at like compact fluorescence or metal halides. The thing with LEDs is they're a lot more efficient than the older types of lights and you don't need the same amount of wattage flowing through an LED to produce the same quality of light from like a compact fluorescent or metal halide, for example. So I wouldn't give it too much thought Usually when it comes to wattage, um, I would 
focus more on how the light is advertised. Like they're gonna tell you what size tank that light fits. If you're getting a strip light, you know, something like I have on this tank, then the length of the light is usually gonna be just fine for the size of tank you have, right? Photosynthetically active radiation is something that's gonna be a little more useful than wattage in my opinion, but at the same time, it's not really something that I ever look at unless I'm looking at a light for a really deep tank. PAR is just talking about how much energy this light is putting out that plants can use. And so that is important if we have a really deep tank because PAR slowly goes away as you go underwater. And that's because water can reflect some of the light and then also um, little particles that you might not really see, gas suspended in the water column or like debris floating around could either absorb or reflect light. So that's the reason that we see it slowly go down as we go down in a tank. When you're looking at a really deep tank, you need a light that's got a high par value. And it's not just like a high par value, but you want to look at how well that par penetrates the water depth. And so a really good light company will advertise the par levels at like, you know, one foot deep or half a foot deep, whatever. So you can look at what the par is at a low water depth. Again, this is really only important for deep tanks where the light can't penetrate all the way down. If you're setting up a shallow tank, anything that meets the wavelength or Kelvin specs that I've talked about should be just fine. Lumen is just a measurement of how intense of a visible light spectrum there is. Lumens measures what we can see, not what plants can use. So measuring what we can see and using that as an indicator for how good of a light it is for plants is not effective. Even though some people are obsessed with lumens, I would say it's not important. Don't waste your time on it. The lighting period is actually a very important thing that I don't think enough people talk about when they're looking at lights, but um, basically you think about plants and do a little bit of research, you'll find out that plants can't continually photosynthesize. Just like humans and other animals, they need a break or a sleep period essentially. So plants, depending on the species, can photosynthesize between eight and 16 hours a day. Most of the plants that come from our aquarium live around the equator, and these regions naturally receive around 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. Maybe a little bit of variation, you know, um, 14 or 16 hours of light on the higher end and same with uh, dark periods. If you have a uh, ecosystem tank or a low tech tank where you're using kind of a less intense light, when I say less intense, I mean lower wattage, not that much light blasting in the tank, then you can go up to the higher end 12, maybe even 14 hours a day, but you could be pushing it there. When you're doing a high tech tank with really intense light, liquid ferts and CO2, you need to keep it to eight hours a day. That is a very hard rule that I follow for my tanks at home and for all my clients' tanks. I like to keep the lighting cycle on around eight hours a day. There's a few different types of lights out there. Uh, over the years, you know, compact fluorescents and metal halides have really had their day but they've kind of been outdated with the arrival of LEDs. So just to give you a quick rundown, compact fluorescents are like the long strips and the metal halides are like these really tiny bulbs that get super, super hot. Like even the grease on your fingers, if you touch the bulb without using like a paper towel or something to dampen it, then that grease, when it heats up, when the light's on, is enough to crack the bulb, poof. And so I've ruined one or two uh, through the years, um, like many years ago. And it's a bummer because they're super expensive and it's very frustrating. But um, both of these lights, compact fluorescents and halides, you need to change the bulb every like nine months or so. And it can get kind of expensive when you don't change the bulbs, what happens is 
they lose par and they also change in wavelength promoting less plant growth and more algae growth. So fortunately nowadays we got the LED. LED is really the only type of light that I would say you should be looking at for your aquarium. Not only have they come down in price drastically, but they are far more effective than the other types of lights. So they use less electricity, which means it's better for your electric bill, it's better for the environment, and also it's better for your tank. In the summertime, if you're having a hard time regulating your tank temperature, a metal halide will just fry that water. Whereas an LED barely producing any heat isn't gonna change the temperature of your tank at all. Some other cool things about the LEDs is that you don't really ever have to change the bulbs. LEDs should outlast us. Maybe if you live a really long time, you might have to replace your light at one point or another. But um, yeah, the actual diodes go forever. They have thousands and thousands of hours worth of light life. The prices of LEDs vary significantly, but for entry level models, you can find super, super cheap ones. They're great. And then the one other thing that I love about them is that they're dimmable and you can change the colors. So there's a lot more programmability when it comes to an LED light. You can set the spectrum to something I have like in this tank to be right for the plants. If you wanna do like some weird rave tank where you have pink and red and blue and green lights, then fine, you can do that too. LEDs will do it all. Um, and then the dimmable factor is really cool. You can set the lights really low or you can blast them at full intensity, which is important when you set up a new tank. I like to have lower lighting intensity and then as the plants fill in, I kind of slowly ramp up the intensity. Now, one other cool thing with regards to being dimmable is that you can program the lights through an app on your phone so that they'll have like a ramp up and down, which emulates the sunrise and the sunset. It's such a fun way to watch your tank slow down at night. And for some fish that like to spawn in the mornings or evenings, having this duration where the light is ramping up and down, it really helps to trigger those natural processes in the fish. So what are some big names in the planted light game? There are tons and tons of different lights. You might be overwhelmed with the amount of stuff. So I'll cover what I think of as like kind of the big brand names out there, at least things that are available in my area. So the first brand I want to talk about is Night Crew. This is a terrific entry level light. They are very, very affordable and they do a terrific job at growing plants. They also have the dim up and dim down features. So like the sunrise and sunset modes. And um, one thing that changes like when you start getting into more expensive lights is uh, how you can control the colors or the Kelvin like I talked about earlier. With this night crew light, you're not going to be able to do that, but you're also saving big bucks. And truthfully, I don't ever mess with the spectrum. You just want what's good for plants. These lights were about 25 bucks a pop. There's three of them on this six foot long tank, and they do a terrific job of growing lights. You can browse through. They've got tons and tons of different types of lights. Most of them are good for growing plants. Look for that in the description. Tiger is another brand that's growing a lot in popularity these days. They make a pretty wide range of lights, anything from like the low end Night Crew versions. And I say low end with regards to price. Night Crew and Higer's low end stuff is still really good quality. So nothing against the quality when I say low end. But Higer makes some really good low end stuff all the way up to high end lights. I would say that they're high end models do have some issues when it comes to the programmability. So for example, like their flagship high intensity light, you can do the dim up and dim down and control the spectrum and stuff, but you can only use it on full intensity if you want sunrise sunset mode. Once you start controlling like, oh, I don't want it on 100%, I want to set it to 50%, then it's strictly a off or on thing or you can set like eight different brackets, which is kind of a hassle. There's tons of other different higher lights. 
some where you just click a button and it will go on for eight hours, 10 hours or 12 hours and then turn off and start again at the same time the next day. This is like the easiest way you can program a light. So easy and convenient. I absolutely love it. Tons of different models. Some are like the strip lights that I have here. Some are the pendants. Some are the clip on backs. Many, many different products. Phoenix is a brand that produces lights that are kind of in the mid range. They're going to be a little more expensive than the night crews, uh, kind of comparable to Higer maybe. I wouldn't say that they're exceptionally good, but they do a good job at growing plants. The programming is fairly easy to understand and the price is decent. Uh, they usually come in strip lights like the one I have on this tank. And so I would put them as a mid range light. Then we get to Fluval. Fluval is something that you see at virtually every fish store. They got lights in your big box stores and your local fish stores. They do a good job at growing plants. They're somewhat okay when it comes to the app. You know, you can set a decent program in there without racking your brain too hard. But I will say that I think they're overpriced. You're spending a lot of money on these lights that are fairly average. I think that they compare in quality to like some of the Higer lights which are gonna be maybe half the price. You're really paying for the name when it comes to Fluval lights. Fluval is an established brand that's been out there for many, many, many years. And so you're gonna pay more for the name than for the actual product. I'm not saying that their lights are bad at all. I'm just saying that you could save your money and get something like a Higer or Phoenix instead of a Fluval. Chihiros is a high-end light. That's what I'm running on this tank. When I say high end, what I mean is that you can control all the features on your phone. It's very, very easy to program. Despite the bad reviews for how bad the app are, I would say that this is the easiest light to program. Some people just like can't figure anything out and they go online and leave bad reviews. But really, you're not going to get any easier than this light when it comes to programming. I will give Chihiro some down points when it comes to the price. These lights are extremely expensive. I don't know if I will be buying any more Chihiro's lights. I think that they are great on this tank, obviously. Plants are growing really well. The fish's colors pop. But I think I could probably get similar results uh, using cheaper lights from maybe Higer or something. I don't know. I'd, Maybe I should do a test one day and compare them side to side. So on the up end, when you order through a high end company like Chihiros, you get good customer service. So one of the lights up there, I ordered with the European plug because I just wasn't paying attention and I'm an idiot sometimes. But yeah, I ordered a really expensive light with the wrong outlet plug and they saw I was ordering to the US and they sent me an email like within a few hours of ordering and I ordered on the weekend and being a Chinese company, they must've been up like pretty late to respond to this email and they checked in with me. They're like, Hey, do you really want a European plug for the light being shipped to America? And so uh, they switched it out for me. They didn't mess around with the price at all really, really good company to work for. That's the difference when you order a light from a high end company and a low end company. Granted, you could argue all you got to do is order the right light and you don't even need any customer service. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, saying that Chihiros is a really good company with really good products and terrific customer service. Oh, and one last one. I almost forgot twin star. Twin Star, I'd say, is maybe just a notch below Chihiros and ADA. They're still going to be a really good quality light with a decent price tag, but a little more generous than uh, the high end ones I was just talking about. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got for aquarium lights. Hopefully this wasn't too boring of a video. Let me know what are your favorite brands of lights? What are some things you look for when you're looking for lights? Did I miss anything today? Leave a comment. Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your support for this channel. Do put a lot of time and effort in 
If you want to support my channel, purchase something through an affiliate link in the description or some free ways to support my channel, just go watch some other videos. Thanks so much. Until next time, see ya.